What's up everybody? Welcome back. It's me Merch and it's time for an outdoor update. And also, I'm putting the compost pile grow into this update because I kind of consider them both an outdoor going on at the moment, especially since the compost grow is like it's kind of like a joke. I mean, it's three little plants we can squeeze it into this one. I think I can make an exception, okay? But we're gonna be doing two giveaways today. One for the last outdoor and one for the last compost video. I am a man of my word and I like to stick to that. So today's first winner is Novice Star Stacker. Congratulations, hit me up. My information is always down below. Same goes for you, Keith Mac. And uh, that was from two different videos. That's why it was split up. Uh, I was pulling from the previous ones. But welcome back everybody, it has been a while. I have been really busy and like I had said from the get-go, this is really a back burner grow. I don't really have very high hopes for this grow and in fact, we lost a plant to bud rot. Shocker, 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 shocker. <laughs> yeah, the, the purple haze down there, guys, before you get all excited, if you even uh, remember. There was a purple haze crossed with Jaeger down in the bottom and it was flowering, it was the furthest along. And of course it has bud rot because it was getting to the stage where it was gonna get it. They're all gonna get it. All these plants are gonna get bud rot. It is just the way that it goes. But up until then, we will enjoy looking at it. And I really did enjoy that plant. And you guys will get a chance to check it out. I don't cut it until the end. But I wanted to give you some fair warning I try not to just yank plants without telling people anymore. I used to hurt people's feelings. So now you've been warned. <laughs> and so the other ones up here, the CBD, they're, they're not looking terrible. There are some leaf septoria going around. There is some fungus going around. There's botrytis going around. There's powdery mildew going around. There's bugs going around. Uh, we don't have anything major yet, but there are some leaf hoppers and uh, stink bugs a little bit of caterpillars those are kind of gone by we have grasshoppers we have no mites so uh, no aphids just sort of your run-of-the-mill stuff nothing terrible uh, and it's getting cold it's getting very very cold here so today we are in the in the morning we are in the low 50 degree Fahrenheit and uh, this is starting to smell okay not terrible but okay so we're in the low 50 degree Fahrenheit we are getting dew in the morning and we have a high temperature of in the mid 60s Fahrenheit so it doesn't take a rocket scientist to know that these plants are totally fucked fucked <laughs> and that is the truth and I don't sugarcoat it anymore guys I'm not gonna try and tell you guys that um, they're gonna be okay these plant these plants are not gonna be okay they're not gonna finish and I've been saying this for a long time um, so basically we and, and I like to hammer this home because as a new grower when I first started I had real high hopes I had real high hopes and basically what I was doing was I was just growing the wrong um, I was just growing the wrong way uh, for my environment it, it really is a I should be growing indoors and that's why I, I am going indoors and that's why I do grow indoors because I I really enjoy it and check that thing out I think that was a green lace wing so um, but what I the kind of the mistakes that I made is I was growing in a bad place so this this place here it's like a swamp on an island off the coast of Maine in the northern hemisphere it is just kind of a bad spot but the plants they veg really well here but they just don't flower well because they just uh you know the botrytis it's in the air and you know you can't really control an outdoor environment and we're we're getting into the rain season now so it's starting to not only is it misting in the morning so we have mist on all the plants in the morning or dew have you so the the plants are covered in and precipitation every morning and every night and then when it rains they get a thorough soaking and it is starting to get into that rain season where we are getting a major rain weekly and it is only going to get uh, worse than that so unfortunately these plants are not doing uh, so awesome and the except for the the tomatoes the tomatoes are doing really well and man oh man they're just packing it on dude every time i'm out here i'm just grabbing handfuls upon handfuls and i'm throwing them everywhere because they do they do spread so next year they'll be uh, 
a whole shit ton of wild tomatoes and I didn't plant these, they just kept popping up. So it, that at least that, I'm really excited about the tomatoes. If nothing else, I got some cherry tomatoes guys and that is worth quite a lot these days. <laughs> But th so this one in particular, I really like this one. I think this was probably, um, you know, one of my favorite CBD plants out here all year. It was a mutant and it still is a mutant. It's growing absolutely insane. It had a little bit of powdery mildew in the beginning. Um, you could see that it really liked the soil up top. It was, it was a very rich, hot soil. And you can tell by looking at the leaves, it's very dark green. It, it doesn't have any deficiencies compared to the other ones. It's very large and it has everything that it really needs. Very, very uh, healthy plant. I'm, I'm excited about this one. And this was the one that we transplanted completely bone dry from a smart pot into this little spot. Now it could have been bigger. It could have been a lot bigger if you had done it more timely, I guess. But in the end, it does it really matter? No, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how big a plant is when it decides to get mold because it just, you know, it's gonna die anyways. But I do, I do like this plant and it doesn't really smell like over the top. The, the CBD plants, I am not getting a lot of terpenes off these plants, you guys, to be frank. They're sort of like, I, when I'm saying one is better than the other, I'm saying that they're, they're good compared to each other, but compared to like THC uh, high plants or maybe just some other strains, these ones, they don't really have anything notable as far as the nose goes but um they have done well so far you know with with the hands that they're dealt uh they haven't got bud rot yet so i guess i'm i don't want to count my chickens before they hatch but these ones so far have not had bud rot which is great the leaves have had a little bit but not on the buds so maybe i will be pleasantly surprised and uh, i probably need to do another defoliation but I just don't have time for that so unfortunately I'm not going to be able to do that and I wish it nothing but the best um, I did a good gutting earlier on but I you know I'm on a very tight schedule this is not my main grow and uh, I don't have like I said I don't really have high hopes for these plants so I'm not going to invest uh, that much time into doing that if I had done it to any of the other plants it would have been all for nothing so that's why I'm, I'm not doing it for these ones uh, just because I feel like it, it would be a waste of my time which is these days kind of valuable I do value my time I value it a lot more than I used to and I used to sort of just do a lot of things uh, like in a whimsical way without really considering the other things that I could be doing with that time and now as I'm sort of focusing more on my attention on my new house and my indoor grows and the sort of you know things that actually have a direction I have been uh, paying very close attention to how much time I spend doing what and this grow is not going to be um, eligible for any of my free time <laughs> I'm sorry so this is all you get I mean getting getting a little bit of time to film and walk through is was actually difficult this week and that's why it's taken me uh, a little while to get an update is because I hadn't been out here and I probably won't be out here again for another week and a half to maybe two weeks we'll see it might be the end of September by the time that I, I get back out here or the beginning of October so who knows who knows how that'll go down but this one here uh, this is a CBD as well this one smells the best out of the CBDs for whatever reason this one is a little bit on the stinkier side it looks pretty good there's not a lot of frost developing on any of these plants yet so usually when you have trichome production you also have heavy terpene production so that's probably why i'm not smelling anything it's because they are not um really doing a whole lot of flowering just yet um and <laughs> like i said they should <laughs> they they need to uh if they would like to be smoked and if they don't want to be smoked, then that's fine. They'll be eaten by a deer or something um, at some point. But either way, they're going to be consumed by something. So I guess they do win in the end. But uh, I would love to have a little bit of CBD for some tincture or, you know, some kind of, some actual herb to smoke. I love smoking CBD. And if there's a higher THC content, that's that's not bad at all. So um, I hope that we, we can get at least one to finish. And th this one here does look like at least it's a... An, 
it's aired out enough where it might possibly make it to the end. You can see, you see how thin it is? So maybe, this one might do it. It looks okay. And also, maybe the one down at the bottom too. The one in the trellis net. That one might make it. I don't know though, it gets less sun. This one here gets sun for most of the day, but the sun is now disappearing below the tree line for a longer periods of time. And that period of time is, is getting higher every day. So uh, the sun used to hit these girls for a, a majority of the day. As live, being in the Northern Hemisphere, basically as winter approaches and as fall approaches, the sun becomes lower and lower on the horizon, meaning it rises later and it and it, go, it drops down earlier over the horizon. So there's less direct sunlight. So we're probably dealing with much less direct sunlight than we started because not only is it lower on the horizon, but it is also the trees. The trees are shading out the sun. So sometimes um, in the very, very near future, the, tree will act, uh, the, the sun will actually never come out of the trees and behind there. So it'll just skirt through the tree line all day long and it will get partial sun all day. So you can see how that's a problem with a sun loving plant. So it's, it's unfortunate, but this is these are things to take into consideration when maybe you're going to be putting a spot together for your cannabis. Uh, they need a lot more open area than than I originally thought when I moved here and I expl and I uh, expanded it quite a bit. But if I wanted these to do even better, I would have to cut much, much more trees down. And I just, I can't justify cutting those trees down because it's not my property, first of all. And um, there's a lot of habitat behind there. And there's a lot of things living in those trees. So cutting them down for these pot plants is, is stupid. So <laughs> yeah, we're not gonna do that. But this, this is the last two raw out here. I know I've been saying that for a while, but this is the last grow out here at the cabin as far as cannabis goes. We, we might do some food out here, but I don't know. It's hard for me to say. So as long as there are plants standing out here, I will find the time to come out here and give an update until there are none left, uh, especially with one like this. But caveat to that, ladies and gentlemen, is I, you know don't have, don't have super high hopes. If you wanna have some high hopes for a grow, it should be for the indoor grow because those are 100% guaranteed harvests, guys. We are 100% guaranteed to get a harvest with every indoor grow. And I stand behind that. So um, with, unless there's a power outage, okay? So maybe not 100, 99.9%. But uh, no bud rot. We're not having any bud rot or powdery mildew on an indoor grow. It's not something that I'm signing up for and it's not something that I uh, condone. Um, out here in the wild, it is something that can happen. Uh, very easily because we're not in control of these uh, we're not in control of the environment so it's just like it's a wild west out here and, and all the bugs and everything so there's nothing I can do about that but one cool thing about growing outdoors that I absolutely love is the size of these plants this plant is like 10 feet tall it's fucking nuts and all these other plants they're like six six and a half seven feet tall i know it's hard to it's hard to show it on the on the camera but i'm filming all these uh all, all these plants i'm filming them at or above my head height here i'm reaching up it's like really high up with a gimbal in my hand so it extends it a little bit it's sort of like a selfie stick that levels itself um and th they're all really tall and you know, I don't have to come out here and mix up nutrients and stuff, so they're self-sustaining. It's really, it's really cool. It's fun to see. Of course, they don't really, you know, they don't do as well as they would if you were just pumping them full of nutrients. For sure, they would be doing better. But look at that! It's got some crazy roots going on. This is the uh, 662 from Bemis, and actually, Bemis, I want to give you a shout out. I'll, I'll talk. I'll show you on the indoor grow update, but. He sent me over a bunch more seeds, a bunch of 662. This here, this plant or this mix of seeds that I got this from, uh, we're gonna be giving away a bunch of these and also um, some, I think it's called Big Blue. I'm not really sure what that is. Uh, I'll have to ask him again for that uh, information. But he sent me over a bunch of these seeds. So if, if you want some of these seeds on the giveaway, I can throw them in for you. I absolutely am gonna be doing a bunch of giveaways 
for a thousand subscribers as well. That's gonna be a, a bunch, I think. I, I don't really, I haven't really thought a plan out. I'm just gonna give a bunch of seeds away. I think that's, I think that's probably the way to go. Um, but the, that 662 from Mississippi, it looks really good. It, uh, it smells really, really good. It's stacking well. I'm very happy with that one and I would like to grow some more of that or, or realistically um, give give somebody else to grow it that grows photo periods. I have a, you guys, I have a fucking stack of photo period beans going right now, like a procrastinator during the finals. Like it's just absolutely out of control. I have so many photo periods and I can't give them away because I want to grow them and they're limited stuff that people have sent me. So it's like, I, I have to grow them at some point and I just don't know when. And this is a little horned bug. They, uh, as you can see on the, uh, on the stem they eat the stem you got to be careful pinching them they're so sharp that, that, that you could cut your fingers and i cut my finger here when i was squeezing it um usually i'm pretty good but yeah they're there that's their defense is they have sharp uh pointy things coming out of their head like buffalo they look like a buffalo bug and they will fuck up your your stalks but and this is napa valley purple kush from freedom farms i don't have any more of these so this is the last of the last and we will see how this one is is finishing up but so far i'm happy with this one i'm happy with the uh with the 662 they both have done really well they look good they smell really good they're starting to get frosty uh these these two might actually finish and stack well this one in particular this napa valley purple kush i think that this one is going to make it um, the closest it's hard for me to say that anything's gonna make it because once they start getting these thicker buds these thicker colas and stuff they start trapping moisture and that's really where that's where the road ends a lot of times and, and then check it out we got bird shit <laughs> the birds they sit on this old trellising and they just shit on everything and it's fine because it's nutrients so it's like it's bloom nutrients you know so maybe that <laughs> maybe that little spot will, will bloom hard you know it'll burn it'll bloom real hard and look we got all sorts of vegetables and fruits and stuff popping out everywhere i eat some and then i throw some on the ground as sort of like a you know a tribute so hopefully they'll they'll grow back next year but this one here this is napa valley purple kush the nice slow pan and this is a beautiful looking plant it is all up top down below there's really nothing there anymore i cleaned it out and i'm glad i did because I did find some nasty stuff down there earlier earlier on, but it's it's cleaned out for the most part now. Got what more wild tomatoes. This corn here, I had to crack it down because it was sort of shadowing the, the other pot plant. These ones, I'm not really sure what was going on with that. I let it go, so maybe we'll have some wild corn here at the end. But you can see everything is turning purple. And they're turning purple and stuff because it's getting cold as shit out here. Even my tomato plants my cherry tomato plants down there are starting to ripen they do that when it gets real cold they, they know they're like okay it's time to go uh, they stay green most of the time but but when we get a few cold nights everything ripens like at once it's like they gets this i don't know it gets this sense where it just everything starts to flip like they like flip the switch and check this beast out i don't care if this thing is covered in mold powdery mildew whatever this is the fucking coolest plant that i've grown in a while it was huge. It was absolutely a go-getter from the beginning. And James, I don't care if, if the plants have had issues or, or what have you. I really, I think you did a good job on this plant. And it's a very hardy plant. It really, really took off and uh, a strong plant. So good job. Um, I, I talk shit about a lot of genetics and I talk shit about a lot of plants, but it's all in fun. I'm, you know, I don't mean, I don't mean anything in a serious negative way. So uh, if you, you know, thought maybe I was talking shit about your genetics, absolutely not. These things have been, been awesome. And the fact that they're even still growing right now is a tribute to them being decent because I usually just yank shit if it doesn't do well. Um, and right here, this is a, I think that was a, a star walker plant and what i did was i cut most of it down and i left the rest of it so that's a piece of the autoflower that is still going and what i was hoping was that maybe it would sort of give me a fucking seed or something <laughs> i don't know man i was i was trying to see if it because some people say that if you leave autoflowers or things like that going long enough they will self seed but i don't see any bananas i don't see anything going on like that it didn't harm it's not pollinating anything so i don't know man i'm just gonna let it keep going until it looks done 
<laughs> it's gonna be the the most sleepy weed I've ever had off that little auto flower right there. It is way past due, but we're letting it roll, baby. And this here, this is another one of the CBDs from James. This one looks okay. Um, it was just kind of pulled around a lot and I didn't really do the best job of training it. I missed a bunch of windows, I think is, is the reality of the fact, but it looks really nice underneath there. Look at all that, like um, it's cover crop and I'm, I'm not talking about the plant looks good. I'm talking about like the top of the soil, like it's got all this organic material. It looks nice. And we do have a leaf, leaf septoria, of course, which is the fungus. Now, if you see little circular dark spots on your leaves, you need to yank those leaves and you probably should do a foliar spray with either baking soda, citric acid, Dr. Zymes, or, or, or milk. You can use milk. Um, I, I wouldn't because that's fucking gross, but you can, do a, you can do a lot of things. And the problem is, is that you have fungus on your leaves and they will continue to grow when water is present. So basically, in the that's a leaf hopper there. And check it out, didn't get him, he hopped away. Um, but in the morning when you get dew on your on your leaves and on your on your plants or when it rains that fungus will germinate and it will spread on your leaves and you will, and it's just a perpetual it just keeps going so you have to get those leaves out of there and you have to you really have to get them out of your garden and you have to clean up all the leaves on the ground it's a sanitation it's basically like a sanitation problem just like botrytis um, but as you can see, that's impossible uh, with my location. It's just not something I'm going to do. And also, it doesn't, it's not possible. So we're not gonna do that. So I'm just pulling the leaves off. But that was a little purple spot. So this one might end up being purple. Sometimes when you see those little purple spots, the plant will end up turning purple later on. But check this one out. RIP, I love this plant. Hefty Lefty dude, you did a really good job on this plant. And if this was an indoor girl or in a better location, this would have been my favorite because it's purple from head to toe. It is definitely genetic because um, the buds themselves were, were really, really purple. They were getting more purple every single day. It had this incredibly sweet smell to it. It seemed like it did have a sativa a leaning side to it but it, it seemed like it was also a bit of indica because it was flowering quickly and it had these real broad leaves and now I know it's indica and sativa those things are kind of like antiquated they're like outdated um, sayings but look this is a very beautiful plant I think it would have been you know I think it would have been a really good yielder it looked like a, it's sort of like a Girl Scout cookies it reminds me of with those golf balls but as you can see it has a ton a ton of bud rot everywhere now i was walking through here for the first time so i'm seeing this all at the same time as you guys are right now and this is when my heart sinks is because if you can see it then it's already too late especially like this if you can see big old gobs of it on your plant you really need to get that plant out of dodge you need to get it out of the area because it's already spreading spores to all of your other flowering plants and there is a pretty good probability that all of the the ones nearby are also carrying these spores and since i didn't spray unfortunately i just you know i didn't have time didn't have the resources this is why i don't really do a lot of stuff out here is because this is the way it goes but look it's been very cold uh, it turned these um, tomatoes purple because we had a very cold night in the high 40s. So it's it's that time when you go from the 80s down to the 40s, you get a lot of tomatoes, but you also get a lot of you get a lot of bud rot. So these uh, these ones are unfortunately they're they're all done. This is the end. It could have been something special i mean in my in my eyes it was a very special plant this one in particular really sort of like captivated me throughout the grow i just i really enjoyed this one and, and being purple i, I like watching it it had a, a really good stature it bulked up incredibly fast so it started very quickly so hefty lefty i think that uh, I, if you have more of these seeds i would like to grow them again at some point in time i just don't know when that's going to be but it is not it is not like sort of suited for the environment that I was growing in it. And anybody who's ever grown a haze could have told me that. 
uh, all, all the hazes and stuff like that, like the sativas, I, I always thought that they were more resistant to water because they were from the equator or something like that. But they, in my experience, they just really don't do well with with the moisture. And, I, and so this is the one I tried to yank it out. I couldn't yank it out. And I was like, wait a minute, why am I yanking it out? It's a no-till system, so let's just cut it off. So I just, I just cut it off with a hacksaw because that's what I got. And what I'm doing here is not what you should do you should absolutely put a bag over this or, or do something spray it um, get it into a separate location sort of try and quarantine the fucking thing if you can but that's not so much of a concern here for me so what I do is I do that I throw it over there that's a deer trail so the deer as soon as I leave they're gonna go and they're gonna eat all of that it's gonna be absolutely gone there's gonna be nothing left within 24 hours so that is the beauty of having deer around is they are like they're like vacuums they will take in all of the bud rot and it will be no longer around and I don't have to go very far so that's kind of cool but yes we lost another one the uh, the little things here are, are doing well these shrubs they're starting to do okay I was using uh, the area as sort of like a little nursery. But back home, this is, uh, I, I didn't want to make this into a full other series just because I am kind of busy. But these these things are starting to butt up. They're starting to do okay. You know, we've got some fall weather out here as well. It, it is more humid out here on the island. So I have my fingers crossed <laughs> about bud rot, but so far no bud rot. I haven't been handling the plants or anything like that. They're doing really good. So I'm very happy with these. They stink to high heaven. They're really, really putting on some, some smells these days. The trichomes are coming on. They're not that big because I topped them, but they sure do smell good. And the hembra is turning into something. I'm pretty happy with how it's going actually um, we have a lot of huge spiders so I stick my head through these things all the time and these fuckers are on my face luckily I'm not very scared of spiders you know they don't bite they, they don't hurt you but yeah I have spiders crawling on my face that are gigantic most times that I'm out here <laughs> but look at this this is the hambra it's doing great uh, I don't really have anything in particular to say about it just yet besides the the nugs are starting to dense up They smell okay. I haven't had anything You know, they're just getting started. So hopefully this is gonna be a big bulky plant um, I'm not sure if they're pollinated or not you guys I don't know if anyone grows out here and I see some red hairs But also it has been raining like a son of a bitch. So it has really been coming down We had a huge rainstorm the other day and these got beat to crap so it could be that but i do see some red hairs on here especially today i went out there again and i checked it and yeah they're getting dense though we're getting some denser nugs on here and i'm gonna let these try and go i'm gonna let them go as, as long as i can so we can get a good idea of you know of these strains i have i have a bunch of them but i i want more i want to test more of them i'm very curious because it you know it's my it's my baby it's something that I just made, even though I didn't put a lot of time into it. I still feel attached to these because that is the way that it goes. But yeah, guys, things out here, the outdoors, the outdoors are, are not so serious and I'm not taking them so serious. And I don't know the next time that I'm gonna do an outdoor update to be frank with you guys. I would I would plan on the end of the month, maybe, uh, I'll pr probably, likely. <laughs> It doesn't matter because I got an indoor update coming soon and that's the one you want to be watching anyways guys because that's the real bread and butter That's where the real goodness happens. We're gonna get in there close tomorrow. I'll see you guys Yeah tomorrow and don't forget to drop a comment down on this video to be on eligible to win on the next outdoor and Drop a comment down on the last indoor to be eligible to win on tomorrow's indoor update But yeah, I've been ch I've been chopping wood like crazy. I'm almost done guys but thanks for thanks for swinging by. I'm going I'm going back home out to my island, and I will talk to you guys real soon. Have a great week. Take care of yourselves. Bye bye, guys. Later.